بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that verily when a believer meets another believer and greets them with peace and shakes their hand their sins fall like the leaves of a tree. So I thought, since mashallah, you guys have been here since so early in the morning, we can do an exercise together. Can everyone stand up, please? Thank you so much. And if the person next to you is your mahram or the same gender, and they're okay with it, turn over and say salams and shake their hand and have your sins fall. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You know what's so beautiful? Some of you are turning behind and in front. So beautiful. You know, we have such a beautiful ummah. All right, Jazakallah Khairan, you can sit down now. We have such a beautiful ummah. Last night, I was standing outside of the hotel waiting for my friend to pick me up and the guards at the hotel entrance. P random brothers and sisters were saying salams to me, random sisters were giving me hugs. And he's like to me, do you know all these people? And I said, no, but this is our beautiful religion. We are all brothers and sisters. The Prophet wasallam, he taught us to say salams to those people we know and those we don't know. This is our beautiful deen, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah. I am so happy you're here. I am so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for choosing me to be in your blessed company this weekend. I just wanted to start off by saying, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the organizers and all of the countless volunteers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us safe protect us from all illnesses and diseases. I know that we're gathering after a long time of not gathering. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way he gathered us here, gather us in Jannah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma ameen. So I wanted to start off by sharing with you one of the reasons that my heart is filled with so much joy and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being here and being in your blessed company. There's a beautiful narration that was collected by both Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim in their Sahih collections, rahimahumullahu ta'ala, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by the way, when I say Prophet, you all should say, sallallahu alayhi wa And I want you to say it in a way that the person next to you hears you, why? Because if they forget, you'll remind them. There are countless virtues of sending peace and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jibreel and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua against the person who hears his name and does not send salawat upon him. So let's try that again. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a caravan of angels and these angels have one mission. Their mission is to roam the earth and look for gatherings like this one. Gatherings in which Allah's name is being remembered and mentioned. And when one of these angels finds this gathering, it runs to the skies and says, angels, I found what you're looking for. It's at the convention center. <laughs> and so they all rush towards this gathering. And the Prophet ﷺ said, some of these angels get so excited to be here that they open up their wings and they cover us with their wings and it covers the distance from the earth 
all the way to the heavens, subhanAllah. The angels sit with us. The angels listen to what we listen to and the angels make dhikr when we make dhikr. Now when we get up and we leave, the angels also get up and leave, but they go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, Allah asks the angels, oh my angels, where are you coming from? And they'll say, we're coming from the Ikna Mass Convention. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, who was there? And the angels will talk about us. They'll say, your servant so-and-so and your servant so-and-so. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what were they doing on earth? And the angels will say, they were glorifying you, declaring your greatness, praising you. They were saying, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu akbar. So why don't we do that together so that we can be from whom the angels talk about with Allah? Do you want to do it with me? Bismillah, let's start. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Can I, can I kind of go on a tangent for a moment? Do I have your permission? I just thought of one of my favorite hadith ever, ever. Alhamdulillah, I read thousands and thousands of narrations as I'm a student of knowledge and so we go through many narrations of the Prophet ﷺ and there's one that I absolutely love and it's a gift for you. Are you ready for it? Okay, Alhamdulillah, I just need to make sure you're awake. It's early, it's Saturday morning. A lot of you flew in last night or drove in this morning. So, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when a servant says Subhanallah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells the angels, oh my angels, write for my servant an abundance of my mercy. And when my servant says, Allahu Akbar, I tell my angels, write for my servant an abundance of my mercy. Amazing, right? Now listen to this last one. And when my servant says, La ilaha illallah, Allah tells the angels, O oh my angels, write for my servant an abundance of my love. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. Imagine something so simple. And your Lord tells his angels to write for you an abundance of his love. Oh Allah, we ask you for your love and the love of everything that you love and the love of the actions that bring us closer to your love. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah. So, let's get back to our hadith. <laughs> So the angels say, Ya Allah, they were glorifying you, they were praising you, they were declaring your oneness. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, what do they ask of me? So imagine, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked you right now, why are you here? What do you want from Allah? What would you say? Did you think about it before you came here? Did you make an intention? If not, now's your chance. Why are you here? What do you hope to gain from this gathering, from this convention? Now the angels say something that I, would, I think you would all agree with me, it's something we all want. They say, Ya Allah, they gathered because they want your Jannah. Is that a true statement? Yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what else do they want? And they say, Ya Allah, they want protection from the hellfire. Is that a true statement? Of course. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, is there anything else they want? And they say, Ya Allah, they want your forgiveness. Is that a true statement? Of course, we all want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that all of the children of Adam commit sins and the best of those who commit sins seek forgiveness. So we all need the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you angels are my witness that I will forgive their sins. 
I will grant them protection from that which they seek protection from, and I will gift them paradise. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. Now there's an angel who comes and says, but Ya Allah, so-and-so wasn't there for the convention. They were actually just passing through. They didn't make dhikr of you. They didn't remember you. They didn't make dua. They didn't listen to the lectures. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I love that gathering so much. I grant them that reward too for whoever sits with these people will not suffer misery. Alhamdulillah. So I hope and I pray that you all feel the joy that I feel right now for being in a gathering of dhikr. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who brought us here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created this perfect storm for you and I to be able to come to this convention and to be sitting in this seat. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give you this great reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose you. So feel joy and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this entire weekend that He subhanahu wa ta'ala invited you to be here. Alhamdulillah. So friends, this year's theme is on justice. And when you think about justice, Many of us, the first thing that comes to mind is what? We tend to think about leaders, rulers, courts, governments. We tend to think of it in the political and legal sense, which is very important. But there's so much more to that. And when we think of the word oppression, what do we think of? We tend to think about others oppressive rulers in so-and-so countries and in our own, oppressive family members or community members. But what if we made ourselves a little bit uncomfortable for the next 10 minutes? What if we made ourselves uncomfortable for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did some introspection? What if we thought about our own selves? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that he does not change the condition of the people of the ummah until they change the condition of their own selves. And that is what we can control. So before we begin self-reflecting together, it's important to understand what is justice, especially what is justice from the Islamic perspective since we're going to be discussing it this whole weekend? Justice denotes placing things in its proper place and giving everyone and everything its due right. And I think it's safe to say that all of us want to be people of justice because we know that there are countless ayats in the Qur'an and a hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that talk about the importance and the virtue of justice. In an ayah that all of us have heard before because many khatibs, when they give their jum'ah khutbah sermon, they quote this ayah. It's an ayah that is so great that the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the great scholar of this Ummah, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said about this ayah, it's one of the most comprehensive ayat in the Qur'an. And in this ayah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala commands the believers, commands his servants to be just. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, Inna Allaha ya'muru bil adzli wal ihsan. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands adl, justice, and ihsan, excellence. So, the reward for being just is tremendous. The people who practice justice in all of their matters will be given a special status on the day of judgment, the most important day of our existence. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that on the day of judgment, a day that is filled with so much horror, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from its horror, Allahumma ameen, that those who were just will be in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on pulpits of light. 
And so you might be thinking, who are these special people who get to be on pulpits of light and they do not witness and experience the horrors of the Day of Judgment? And the Prophet ﷺ told us, those who practice justice in their rulings and with their families and in everything that they did. So true righteousness, which is something that we all want to attain, is to fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rights of his creation. And you and I are a part of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so justice starts from within. It starts with each and every one of us. So my question is, how? How can we be just towards ourselves? Do any of us really oppress ourselves? Is that even possible? You might be wondering. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made this religion perfect and complete. It's holistic. Every part of you and I is important. And justice with yourself is giving yourself, your body, mind, and soul its due right. Taking care of these beautiful gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted you and I with. Now, what does that look like? Taking care of your soul by fulfilling its purpose, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing what he commanded and staying away from what he subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited. Subhanallah, when we sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we wrong our own selves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran the story of our parents, Adam and Eve. When they disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they ate from the tree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught them words to say so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive them. Now, what were these words? Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa in lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. O oh, our Lord, we wronged our own selves. And if you, Ya Allah, don't forgive us and have mercy upon us, we're going to be from the losers. And so today, I want to share with you three characteristics of justice that's within our capacity and our control. Number one, to be just with your own self. How? By worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing what he says to do and staying away from what he says not to do. And if you slip and make a mistake, doing like our parents, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as long as you call upon him and ask him for forgiveness, he will forgive you. So we already discussed that. Number two, being just to this incredible body and mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted you and trusted you with. This is such a beautiful blessing and a gift. Our mind, our body, our heart. These are gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us and told us, hey, take care of them until you meet me again. And so taking care of them is a must. There's a beautiful story where Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, paired him with Abu al-Darda in Medina. Now Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu one day visited Abu al-Darda. When he walked into his home, he noticed that Abu al-Darda's wife looked shabby. She looked unhappy. So he said, are you okay? Everything okay? And she said, your brother Abu al-Darda does not care for the luxuries of this world. And then it was time for food. So Abu al-Darda brought some food for Salman and Salman radiallahu anhu noticed that Abu al-Darda is not eating. So Salman said, eat with me. He said, I'm fasting. He said, no, I won't eat until you eat. So he made him break his fast. And then it became night. And after Salat al-Isha, Salman radiallahu anhu was going to sleep. And he noticed that Abu al-Darda was standing up in prayer. So he went to Abu al-Darda and he said, Oh, Abu al-Darda, right now is the time for sleep and rest. Go to sleep. So Abu al-Darda went to sleep. And then he woke up. And then Salman noticed he woke up. And he told him, No, it's not time for prayer yet. Go back to sleep. And he said, Your body has a right upon you. Your soul has a right upon you. And your Lord has a right upon you. Give everyone its due right. 
So they go back to sleep. And then in the last third of the night, Salman who wakes up and wakes up Abu Darda. And he says to him, now it's time to pray. Now you could imagine Abu Darda was probably pretty frustrated, right? <laughs> I was trying to do my daily routine and you came and you kind of disrupted it. So at Fajr time, Abu Darda went to the Prophet Sallallahu to complain and said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what Salman did to me. Now listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu said. The Prophet Sallallahu said, your brother Salman spoke the truth. And in another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu heard about a, a companion, Abdullah ibn As radiallahu anhumah, who wasn't taking care of his body. And the Prophet Sallallahu told him, your body has a right over you, your eyes have a right over you, and your wife has a right over you. Give everyone its due right. So my friends, our bodies have rights upon us. Our minds have rights upon us. So what are some ways that we can take care of our body and our minds? What are some ways that we can take care of this beautiful gift and be more just to ourselves? Number one, make dua. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you. There's a beautiful narration in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was said that by his wife, that every time he would leave his home, he would look at the heavens and he would make a dua and say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adhilla aw udhal, aw azilla aw uzal, aw adhlima aw udhlam, aw ajhala aw yujhal alay. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you lest I misguide others or I am misguided. I seek refuge in you against slipping or causing someone else to slip. I seek refuge in you from doing an injustice to someone else or someone else doing an injustice towards me and I seek refuge in you from wronging anyone or having anyone wrong me. Beautiful dua, right? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. Imagine every day when the Prophet would leave his house, he would make dua, Ya Allah, don't let me oppress myself. So make dua. And if you'd like this dua, I made for you a worksheet where you can grab this at the registration tables. There's a small card. And if you scan this code, I have all the du'as I wanted to share with you but couldn't share with you because I only had a very small limited time. So make du'a. And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your Lord said, call upon me, I will respond to you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make you more just with yourself and others. Number two, be kind to your mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves kindness and justice and gentleness. So be kind to your mind. How? by speaking to yourself kindly. And last but not least, be kind to your body by doing exercise. There are so many virtues of exercise and walking, and there are physical virtues and benefits and psychological ones. And the Prophet Sallallahu he gave us so many narrations where he actually gives rewards for walking and not riding to the masjid. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us all just. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to be just with ourselves and others. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to forgive those who harmed us and those who we've harmed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their hearts soft and have them forgive us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in Jannah the way he gathered us here. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.